Over the last 14 million years, a lot has changed with Echo and Zia. First we will take a look at Echo. The atmosphere has altered its colour to a cool blue due to the increased oxygen and nitrogen levels in the atmosphere. The continents have moved apart, increasing the circulation of water in the oceans around the planet's surface. The land has mostly turned green, indicating the spread of plants onto the land. This cladogram shows us how the Siphon Robustus has evolved into four new marine species and one amphibious form that has undergone cancernization. Anim the animal at the top of the diagram is the Oculus acuti, or keen eye. It is the first predator to evolve on Echo. Next is the Teste spiculi, or barb shell. Then we have the Falsum auxilium, the false kelp. Then the Dorsum spinosum, the spine shell. Then finally the Aenium pisces. An animal built for speed, this animal is an omnivore generalist. The Oculus acuti must have evolved as a predator because of an overpopulation in Siphon Robustus, leading to a scarcity in food. From within this population, the most aggressive individuals would have been selected for as competitive and passed on their alleles to the next generation. From this point, it would have been a small jump for the, the aggressive individuals to turn to scavenging their bo the bodies of other dead Siphon Robustus and from there to direct cannibalism. This is how the ecology balanced itself. The gill slits of the ancestral Siphon Robustus have extended laterally and developed the musculature to allow them to act as three pairs of powerful fins essentially for speed in chasing its prey. The eyes have developed into two sets of compound eyes, giving this animal forward-facing and wraparound vision. The neural ganglion of the animal is larger than its ancestor in order to execute successful hunting, and to operate its limbs to swim around in a coordinated fashion. Of the five jaw tentacles, the two on either side have fused so that the animal has n now has a pair of biting mandibles and a single trunk for grabbing and holding prey. The testi spiculae is an offshoot of the siphon robustus that has developed a gastropod-like physiology with a sticky foot for crawling over surfaces and a shell to defend itself from predation. It has also developed a behavioural adaptation of gathering with others of its kind, with their pointed articulated shells pointing upwards to defend themselves. They wave them around menacingly. The false kelp, falsum auxilium, evolved a long snake-like body that allows it to camouflage itself by coiling itself around the stems of the nervosphera. When swimming, this animal moves in an anguilliform motion. No longer relying on a siphon for locomotion, the organ has disappeared completely. In its place are a set of mandibles for chewing and ingesting soft plant matter. In this case, the leaves of the Nervosphera itself. One group of Siphon Robustus has evolved into a crab sea urchin analogue. The dorsum spinosum, or spine shell, has undergone compression of the original body plan and the siphon has become a mouth underneath the animal. The legs of the animal are supported by a hydrostatic skeleton like those of a velvet worm. When attacked, the animal hunkers down against the sediment. Its legs twist into the sediment, anchoring it in place. This animal feeds by sucking sediment into its oral cavity, 
and sifts the sediment for detritus and algae. When finished, it regurgitates the clean sediment back onto the sea floor. It then moves on to a new location. The spines on its back offer it some protection from the oculus acuti, but if it is somehow rolled over, its underside is vulnerable to attack. In the rock pools of the intertidal zone, we find the remnants of a siphon robustus that perished and was washed ashore. The dorsum spinosum scavenged the remains. We also see a new variant of the nervosfera growing over the boulders above the waterline, producing self-supporting stems with air-breathing leaves. We shall call this new variant the Resens spiritus. The last of the Siphon Robustus descendants is the Aeneum Pisces. It has evolved a heart to pump blood to its fins and a tail to allow it to swim very quickly to evade predation, and has a larger brain and its body shape is very streamlined. Internally, a cartilaginous skeleton has developed allowing it to move faster by creating a structure for its musculature to hold on to. It has retained the main tentacle as a grasping trunk and has evolved camouflage patterns to break up its outline. We sent a member of our crew further inland, beyond the rock pools, and found mounds of a thick purple moss-like plant covering the ground. Here and there we could see the dorsum spinosum crawling through the moss. They appeared to be laying their eggs on land. Towering above the moss are shaggy mushrooms, we will call these tower caps. These are actually a fungus complete with a hythe mat running through the humus under the moss. We are fairly certain that the tower cap here, Turin, is related to a spacefaring mushroom spore we are aware of, a cosmozoan, that propagates through space as a spore that settles on planets by panspermia. Back in the intertidal zone, we find a scutamite colony. This is a hive of scutamites. It has evolved from the scutum stellata we saw in the last time jump. The scutum stellata was a polychaete worm filter feeder that retracted into the sediment, covering itself with shell plates as a defense mechanism. This evolutionary descendant has become a colony forming creature like ants or bees on Earth. The colony works together to build these spires, which the scutamites move through a tunnel system to reach the node where they can extend out their filter feeding arms through into the water to feed. Some of the scutamites have barbed harpoons that shoot out at prey that are then dragged down into the tunnels to be eaten. During low tide, the scutamites excrete their waste out through the windows of their towers. They also periodically flex their arms out into the open air to pump fresh air into their tunnel systems. In the tower, the spires that they create lean inwards towards the land. The structure acts as an enormous comb, snaring animals and plant material indiscriminately that are carried inland by the tides. Once snared, they are at the mercy of the scutamites. Here we have the three main forms of the scutum stellata. First the original ancestral form, which has a radial symmetrical head. Next is the scutamite filter form uh, version, which has the filter feeding arms. And lastly is the scutamite harpoon form. You can see how the mandibles have been adapted to form these uh, harpoon appendages and the eyes are larger to enable it to hunt better. And its gills are facing backwards so they do not impede hunting. 
The scutamites construct their tunnels by secreting a chitinous glue that hardens underwater. It is used to build concentric rings which create the tunnel which they move through. The scutamites will also collect anything that they can carry that is hard to glue to the structure to reinforce it. This can be materials like sand, pebbles or discarded shells or whatever they can find. Now we will take a flight over to the planet Zia to see how the terraforming project is coming along. From orbit we can see that the atmosphere has been improved. It is much thicker and has clouds. The oxygen and nitrogen levels are much higher but an unmodified human would not survive on the surface without a respirator. Our records show us that the auto factories built ships to ferry ice comets to the planet and directed them to fall onto the surface. Most of the ice was converted into rain as they fell through the atmosphere. As moisture levels on the planet increased, mushroom spores from the cosmosoans in space started to germinate in the soil of Zia, forming a base level of microbial action in the soil. After this comet bombardment phase, the auto factories started introducing terrestrial algae and kelp into the oceans as well as plankton. Simple plants such as moss were also added. A large canal system was constructed to help spread water around the planet. Thank you for joining us on exploring this second epoch. I hope that you found this one interesting. We will be making preparations to jump ahead another 10 million years soon. This week we sailed past 100 subscribers. I'm blown away by your support for this series. If you have any ideas for the direction of the evolution of the species shown in this episode, I'm interested in reading your ideas. Until next time, bye!